All right, so I got a really positive story here for you guys on a potential upcoming strike among railroad workers here in the United States that could be absolutely gigantic in terms of bolstering the current state of the American labor movement. So here from Yahoo Finance, they say a rail strike could result in damaging economic shock. What will Biden do? So we're going to read some of the details here, and then I'm going to show you this uh, fantastic video that was put together by More Perfect Union. They always have great coverage on uh, union drives and things like that, but essentially you have a standoff right now between some of these larger railroad unions who are just asking for like the bare fucking minimum. They're talking about safety standards. They're talking about uh, increased wages to keep pace with uh, inflation. They're talking about very reasonable requests that they are demanding right now. And yet you still have these privately owned, billionaire owned uh, railroad corporations who are refusing to give them what these workers deserve. And so if they end up going on strike, as they are uh, pointing out here in this article, damaging economic shock, what that translates to from a uh, union perspective is a significant amount of leverage in the potential upcoming negotiations that Biden is actually going to have a pretty substantial role in. And so we'll get to see, uh, you know, exactly how much of a pro-union president Joe Biden actually is. So let's go ahead and get into some of the details here. They say, there could be a major blow to the U.S. economy coming down the line. Freight railroads are preparing for possible strikes as years-long labor dispute sits at an impasse ahead of a key Friday night deadline. They say a strike would not only add to the nation's supply chain woes, but would throw a monkey wrench into President Biden's plan to tout the nation's economic progress as midterm elections approach. They say on the one side are freight companies like Union Pacific, CSX, and BNSF Railway, owned by the billionaire Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, and on the other side are labor unions representing around 140,000 workers who are pushing for improvements in wages, working conditions, and time off. Okay, so again, uh, the damage here that could be done to the U.S. economy, you know, many people within this country are going to view that as a negative. Of course, we just saw the recent uh, RMT strikes over in England and the backlash from corporate media, the backlash from corrupted politicians over there, and uh, trying to get society to turn against them for asking for just the bare fucking minimum of what they deserve. And uh, that could be happening here in the United States in the upcoming days or weeks. As uh, again, as they're pointing out there, there could be significant supply chain shocks, economic damages. But again, uh, in the short term, that might cause some economic damage. But in the long term, this is just an example of like kind of the power of what something like a general strike could actually do, right? We don't have the organizational capacity right now within the labor movement in the United States to do something like a uh, general strike, even though that would be absolutely amazing. But this is pretty much like as close as you could possibly ask for in terms of something that could legitimately shut down the American economy and uh, do significant damage. We're talking about billions and billions of dollars of damage uh, if they even decide to strike for just a week. So again, a considerable amount of leverage that is in the hands of these labor unions right now. But they continue saying that in the middle sits the Biden administration. Labor Secretary Marty Walsh is rearranging his schedule to tend to the talks, and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen is warning that a failure would mean a damaging supply sh shock to the economy. And the White House is closely monitoring the negotiations, Yellen said Sunday during an interview on CNN, while figures across the administration reportedly engage in a series of emergency meetings to head off the confrontation. They say that President Biden, meanwhile, is said to be monitoring the situation closely. He has long positioned himself as a defender of unions, but is facing strong incentives this week to avoid a strike at all costs. And a spokesperson for the Department of Labor told Yahoo Finance that a shutdown of our freight rail system is an unacceptable outcome for our economy and the American people, and all parties must work to avoid that. No, not all parties must work to avoid that. If you want to avoid it, then these companies that are making profits off of the backs of these railways workers by exploiting them and putting them in awful working conditions, as you're going to see in this video coming up, uh, they should just give in to the demands, okay? The quickest way to end this strike would be for President Biden, if he is this pro-union president that he wants to claim to be, to aggressively come out in favor of the union's uh, demands that they are trying to make. He should call on these companies to just accept those demands so that you can avoid a strike. But if you're not willing to do that, then number one, you're not a very pro-union president, and number two, uh, you are going to end up with a strike on your hands, and it's going to be absolutely nobody's fault, but the Biden administration and these uh, companies uh, and you know obviously the union would not deserve any blame whatsoever in that context but they, they continue saying that as of Monday there are two key holdouts the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and Trainmen and uh, Smart TD and they didn't sound optimistic they said in a joint statement the union said that they are not close to an agreement while accusing the companies of what can only be described as corporate terrorism and you're going to see why they're using that strong language here in a second but they say a recent report from the Association of American Railroad 
Rhodes found that a stoppage could cost the U.S. economy $2 billion per day and result in widespread supply chain snarls, potentially shutting down 30% of the country's freight capacity and also halt most passenger and commuter rail services. 30% of the country's freight capacity. Okay, so again, some people are going to look at that and say, oh my God, this is an absolute disaster. This would be horrible for you know American uh, workers across the board. That's what conservatives are going to come out and say in that, oh, these workers are just greedy. They're asking for too much. Uh, but at the end of the day, 30% of the country's freight capacity being shut down, even just for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, uh, again, really to me indicates that they have a considerable amount of leverage in these negotiations and that they should use the power that they have, uh, whether it's in striking or whether it's in making demands during these negotiations to get every single goddamn thing that they are asking for. So now I want to jump into this uh, video that was again put together by More Perfect Union on uh, exactly what they are asking for and why they are fighting for this right now. So let's go ahead and jump into this. The impact of a railroad strike across the industry, it would be like asking what would be the results if a nuclear bomb went off in New York. Obviously, it would be utter chaos and catastrophe. It seems intentional, like the railroad industry is intentionally trying to create an oppressive work environment so that they can reach their end goal and be able to give more money back to Wall Street. These workers have worked now for the last three years throughout a pandemic, putting themselves and their families at risk without a rate. They have not received any pay increase during that time. At the same time, they've seen their numbers dwindle dramatically. They've also seen the highest profits in the history of railroading over that same stretch of time. Think about that, okay? This is something that, again, applies to the entire American economy right now as we've seen inflation take off. A lot of that, again, an outright majority of that, depending on which study you want to talk about, has been coming just as a direct result of corporate price gouging. And you see that on display right now where these rail companies are making record profits throughout the pandemic, and yet the people, the actual railroad workers, who are providing the value for them to make those record profits haven't even gotten a fucking raise throughout the entire duration of the pandemic while this company that's seeing record profits is continuing continuing in the meantime while not giving them raises to cut back the amount of people that are employed there to give them more oppressive working conditions to uh, force them to work longer hours and in many cases as you're going to see when they continue here uh, a lot of the conditions that they're putting these railroad railroad uh, workers under are just straight up dangerous for everybody in the situation they want more with less and that comes down to people resources locomotives maintenance everything Railroads have laid off 45,000 people in the past five years. That means that they are completely incapable of meeting the demand that is placed on our economy. Just on duty time, you are very commonly working 80 plus hours a week. That does not include the time that you're sitting at the away from home terminal. I mean, you might be away from home, subject to the railroad, not with your family for 120 hours in a week. You know, I don't know the specifics of, um, you know, the wait times and how they're not paid in this industry specifically, but I do know that that's pretty similar there where basically, again, they're getting paid for like working 80 plus hours a week or something like that. But that time that they're getting paid or that they're on clock, they're not actually getting paid for the time in between where they're just forced to like wait around until they're actually able to move or when they're actually able to go complete their deliveries. And that's very similar to the uh, trucking industry as well, where sometimes where you have like massive holdups at these ports where uh, truckers are trying to... Uh, unload or to uh, unload a lot of their uh, their uh, freight that they're carrying that uh, a lot of these uh, truckers are just sitting there in traffic or sitting there waiting for their next uh, supply shipment and they're not being paid in the meantime so it's just complete and utter bullshit I mean we're talking about people who again are uh, having cutbacks faced where now they're uh, having to work longer hours they're having to work in uh, completely ridiculous time schedules and a lot of them are facing straight up again dangerous conditions as a result of that while they're also not being compensated adequately for the actual time that they are spending on the job on these long runs like we have where you're on the train consistently 10 11 12 hours it is not realistic for a human being to be by themselves there's no gas station 12 hours with one person on the train running it okay 
Again, 12 hours with one person. That's what they expect to be a realistic scenario, okay? Completely fucking insane and also dangerous. Again, you cannot expect one human being to sit on a, a train, which is essentially they're sitting in this box. Again, as he's pointing out here, they don't have the ability like even some truckers do to go to a rest stop, to go uh, take a break, to stretch their legs, to get a meal, to get some coffee, whatever it may be. You're just sitting on this train for potentially 10, 11, 12 hours by yourself. And that's one of the demands that they're trying to make is to uh, make sure that they have at least two people on all of these trains when they're doing those long runs here. Station to stop at to get a cup of coffee when you're nodding off, when you're getting tired, you can't get up and stretch your legs. Let's say the boards are exhausted the way they are and you think you're going to work at six in the morning. Nope, there's a shortage of people. You end up getting called to work at one in the morning. When you're tired, you haven't gotten any sleep, you've tossed and turned, and then they expect you to be on a train for 12 hours by yourself. used to be paid an above average salary because we work an above average lifestyle where we are gone holidays, weekends, but the way inflation is devaluing our purchasing power, that's not really the case anymore. You might only be making like $26 an hour gross when you consider the time that you were on the train, the time after your hours of service expired that you're sitting there in a siding, the time sitting in a hotel up to 16 hours without pay, and the fact that you're having to pay for those meals out of pocket. The sacrifice that we make is not being compensated. In this round of contract negotiations, I believe railroad workers as a whole want four things. An increase in their pay, they want to keep their health insurance, they want the ability to take time off when they're sick, when they need time with their family without being subject to an oppressive attendance policy, and we don't want to be forced to one-man cruise the way the railroad wants to cram it down our throat. Okay, so, I mean, I'm gonna cut off the video there. I'll link it down below if you wanna go watch the rest of it. But, I mean, look at the fucking demands that they're making, okay? Pay increases just to keep pace with inflation, right? He's talking about, again, you know, when you take into all of these other uh, variables into account, that they might only be making $26 an hour, okay? These are people who are having to go on 10, 11, 12 hour runs. They're, uh, you know, facing grueling conditions. They're on one man crews, which is, uh, again, straight up dangerous in many circumstances. They have ridiculous time schedules. And um, they're also just not being compensated for all of that external time whether it's staying in a hotel where they're away from their families, whether it's, uh, you know, going and having to pay for their own meals, whether they're sitting and uh, waiting for freight to be onloaded and offloaded. It's just completely ridiculous. They are asking for crumbs here, okay? This is the bare fucking minimum in terms of what these workers actually deserve. So pay increases, uh, they want to maintain the same health insurance. They're not even wanting to potentially bolster their health coverage, but just maintain the same level that it was at. A uh, fair attendance policy again, so they are not having to work these ridiculous hours and, uh, you know, be strung along and uh, get different hours to depending on the day, uh, and no one-man crews, which is, again, just a straight-up safety concern. So at the end of the day, I mean, these demands that they are trying to make are 100% fair and legitimate, and if anything, this is just the bare minimum. They could be asking for much more. They certainly deserve even more than what they are asking for in these contract negotiations. And so now we're going to get to see exactly how much of a pro-union president Joe Biden actually is. And, uh, you know, if Joe Biden is not willing to go out there and, uh, you know, try to pressure a lot of these uh, billionaire-owned corporations to give the the workers what they are demanding straight up then uh you know we're going to be able to come to the conclusion that maybe he's all talk and uh all bark with no bite and you know this is a perfect chance for him to actually demonstrate that you are a pro-union president and if he comes out and aggressively stands on the side of these workers then i'll give him a little bit of credit for that but if he doesn't and if these uh, corporations are not willing to concede to every single one of the demands that these workers are making then they should go on strike you know whether or not that's potentially going to cause significant damage or billions of dollars in damage to the American economy. That's the whole point. I mean, that's the point of a strike. And uh, again, you know, some people might look at that as a negative and say, oh my God, they're hurting the American economy. They're hurting everybody else in the process of doing this. Well, uh, you should be blaming the corporations for that, right? It's not on these workers, the fact that they have to deal with these brutal and oppressive uh, and exploitative uh, working conditions that they are currently facing and dangerous working conditions that they are currently facing. That's not their fault that they are put in a position where they may have to go on strike and, uh, you know, potentially tank the American economy in the process. That is 100% on the fault of these corporations and potentially, depending on which way he wants to go, uh, also partly the fault of Joe Biden for not aggressively lobbying on their behalf. So, you know, I hope, you know, at the end of the day that they do do this strike and that that puts a little bit of pressure and maybe some fear in the hearts of a lot of the uh, capitalists in this country who refuse to meet the demands of a lot of these other unions uh, significantly, like, uh, you know, uh, Starbucks workers right now and Amazon workers as well. Maybe this could be something where people actually get to see the power of 
of having a union where instead of going and trying to beg on an individual basis for uh, pay increases or for better working conditions, etc., uh, you know, actually acting in a collective manner with your fellow workers in order to make those demands. And if those demands are not met, then you have the use of force and uh, you're going to go out and strike and uh, continue striking until those demands are met or until some sort of a contract is negotiated. So uh, this is a super interesting story and I will keep you guys updated the more that we get details. Uh, nothing but solidarity with these workers and every worker across the country and across the world that is trying to fight for their own rights and trying to fight for uh, better working conditions and better pay and better benefits. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying things.